Welcome back to the SDG series. I'm here again with the lovely Anne-Marie, and we are now working on the SDG 3 of good health and well-being. Uh, to get started, uh, Anne-Marie, do you want to do a quick recap and tell us about this SDG? Thank you for the introduction. We've already had like this sort of uh, introduction that's the same. I love this lovely Anne-Marie. Thank you. Thank you, lovely Namrata. Um, I think today we have a really interesting goal, just like the other ones we've tackled. It's uh, SDG 3, good health and well-being. And it's again one of these basic goals that really tackle into something that everybody should partake in, because it's about creating um, well-being for everybody, everybody on the planet, long term also. So this goal, we'll, we'll tackle a little bit about the practical side of it, and then we'll start to dig in where we have more of a conversation, Namrat and I. Yeah. Uh, and the uh, SDG3 has 13 underlying targets. And we haven't really tackled this topic before about targets. So there's two kinds of targets. One is a uh, an outcome target, and they have numbers. So for instance, SDG3.6 is an outcome target and it looks at what we want to do before 2030. Then there's something uh, with a letter instead of a number. So for instance, 3.A, and this is a, uh, let me just read it properly, the means of implementation target. So this one supports the other targets with the numbers being achieved and being uh, worked with. So they're more like uh, meta targets. Mm -hmm. And then for each of the targets, there are indicators, usually two to four indicators um, that really uh, digs deeper into the specific work for this SDG. Right. No, so that sounds, uh, it sounds very, very high level and a bit intimidating. So before we get into the targets, let's break down promoting health and well-being. So the goal primarily looks at health and well-being for all. And that's quite broad. And then they break that down further into um, reducing child mortality rates, reducing suicide rates, epidemics, air hazards, and kind of also building the research and development for uh, health more broadly. Um, so these are all really large things. What has the progress been on these uh, goals? Excellent put. I think um, this goal, just like many of the other goals, it has like really far reaching implications and it looks at so many different things. Like you say, everything from child mortality to yeah. airborne uh, viruses or chemical hazards uh, and traffic deaths. Like it's big, right? Everything that has to do with living a long life where we're not interrupted by diseases or something that could have been prevented. Yeah. And um, there's a lot of organizations who tackle specifically this topic. So everything in the healthcare sector, of course, is trying to uh, lower this uh, the rate of, of maybe specific things or just overall well-being and health. And then for governments around the world, they are also really tackling this topic because it costs money when people get sick or people get injured. So there's money in making us all more safe and happy and creating this space Sometimes I do find that it's also about making us live as long as possible, and I don't think that is the the best outcome. We don't need to live 120 good years. We need to live as many good years as possible, and and that's yeah. the uh, the opposite, right? Yeah. But there's there's a lot of uh, research being done, and there's a lot of um, reports around this topic. So I think for everything specifically of these first nine targets, you can find uh, hundreds of reports for specific countries or regions or areas. Right. Um, so I think good health is a very uh, broad term and I guess it's interconnected with most of the goals um, of uh, the UN SDGs. Um, if you're looking at specific facts and figures of the progress, um, is there anything you can share on that? There's a UAE report yeah, uh, which is very interesting because it literally takes these uh, nine first uh, targets and looks at what we do here in the UAE and how we're trying to tackle the topics. It's, it's it's really interesting to see it from the perspective of where we live, right? Yeah. So it tackles uh, child mortality in the different Emirates. Yeah. It looks at, uh, I think, traffic deaths and uh, how many 
um, health workers are nurses and doctors and for how many people. So this one really makes it very, yeah, it makes it very clear what it is they're working with and how it aligns with the targets of the SDGs. No, that's that's interesting. And I, I had a chance to go through this report and some of the things that stood out was uh, the UAE has the lowest tuberculosis globally, which is amazing. And also 100% of births that happen in the UAE are attended by skilled health professionals. So I guess in this space, the UAE is trying to do a lot. Um, and I think one thing that really stood out for me in what the UAE is doing is fighting obesity through the Dubai fitness challenge, uh, the, the get active for 30 minutes for 30 days challenge, which they launched in 2017. And uh, for those of you that don't know the fitness challenge, um, the aim is for one month, the UAE offers uh, free classes, medical checkups, and they engage with the residents to encourage them to be more active, to engage with sport. And uh, they're doing this to basically, it's part of the UAE's national agenda with SDG3, and they're fighting obesity through it. So this is a great example of uh, what UAE is doing with this SDG. And it, it also, I mean, if you think about it, companies are also doing so much, right? A lot of companies now have, uh, you know, uh, fitness trackers associated with employees. They have competitions associated uh, to encourage people to be active, to be, you know, healthy. Um, and also with the food that they provide in their canteens or in their cafes, uh, people are becoming a lot more mindful uh, about what they are giving their employees. I think you nailed uh, Namrata because what they have done with this uh, fitness challenge, Dubai fitness challenge, is they've created an open platform, right? where yeah. everybody is allowed to partake and they can use it in the way they want to both to educate um, to create engagement in their little communities or in bigger communities and we can start to tackle topics that might be hard but now they're in a specific setting so now we can talk about food or obesity or and working on on your body as a positive thing right where yeah. sometimes if it comes in a in a brochure or it comes uh, somehow not invited then it's harder to to take it in as an individual so it's a really good example and, and yeah, yeah great explained no absolutely so there's a lot happening about sdg3 um and i think um there has been a lot of uh progress with sdg3 in the last couple of years but of course, as we all know, the pandemic threw all our goals um, a little off track. Uh, can you give us some insight about how the pandemic has impacted the goals? Yeah, I think the the it's not funny, but SDG 3.3, the target 3.3, is really about eliminating uh, epidemics. It doesn't use the word pandemics, but epidemics such as uh, age, um, uh, tuberculosis, malaria, and other known epidemics that somehow come up and come down um, and what we can see is of course you can eliminate them like AIDS there's a lot lower numbers now than there used to be just five years ago so we're on the right track for that malaria is also being tackled tuberculosis is really on the down um, all, all over the world but then we see new things happening like COVID right all of a sudden this new pandemic or epidemic which is smaller when it's an epidemic and um, they come in from the side so we have to create this research and development side of it where we are ready for the next health crisis and many times we also talk about obesity for instance on a global level that that is uh, an epidemic and an epidemic uh, so we have to look at health from so many different angles and be prepared for what we can see now are uh, small trends but that might come from for instance, eating the wrong food or not exercising or uh, sitting in uh, rooms where we don't air out and that sort of thing. Right. So they both all the targets are interconnected, but also everything outside of these targets are it really connects, right? That yes. when you have good indoor climate, then you also become less sick. For yes. No, I think for the pandemic, uh, it really showed how important it is for SDG3. I think that really came up because a clear outcome of the pandemic was our hospitals uh, were really overworked. 
um so health systems to be resilient in the country is absolutely essential we saw how it impacted a lot of countries um all over europe they couldn't deal with the numbers and the issues that being were being faced uh you know what happened in india last year with the the a lot of people dying because of a lack of oxygen tanks that they needed uh so health infrastructure the importance of health infrastructure has been brought up a lot more through what happened with the pandemic but another really important part of well-being is mental health mm. which was really uh brought into focus because a lot of people through the lockdown faced a lot of mental health issues uh because of the uncertainty because of being locked out uh, uh because of uh, you know uh, just living in so much uncertainty you know so uh, how are governments tackling mental health now and what can be done to enhance uh, uh people's acceptance of mental health as well yeah. So mental health, I think it's something uh, in our lifetime, right, Namrata, yeah. um, that has become acceptable. Because yeah. you didn't used to talk about uh, not feeling well or needing support on your mental health because you just needed to work. So I think it's a, it's a it's a new thing. It's a very very important thing. And when we talk about some of the uh, targets, they really want to support that everybody has access to a healthcare system all the time uh, for all essentials and mental health is part of that right but we can go to someone and talk to them before it becomes critical um, and i think that's something like uh, the dubai challenge fitness challenge is also a really good place where you can tackle mental health right when you go out and exercise you can all of a sudden talk to someone else about problems in a different way so just the the physical interaction about uh, people and yeah. and having platforms where you can discuss how you're feeling and and meet others in the same situation it's it's become a lot bigger yeah no. and it's still I, i think just like you say like with these increasing amounts of uh, epidemics we will also see an increased pressure on mental health because that really depends on so many of the other sustainable development targets if you don't have any food then your mental health is on, also under pressure if you don't have any money if you don't have a secure job if you don't have health insurance so it yeah. all connects right Yeah, absolutely, and I and I think one part was definitely mental health, but COVID also hindered a decade of progress, right? Uh, with rep reproductive health, with maternal health, with child health, um, so the repercussions are huge. Um, and I think another thing it highlighted a lot was the short how understaffed we were, or uh, the short supply of key medical staff. Um, so there's a lot of catch up governments. Um, companies that they need to do to kind of tackle this such an important sdg of uh, well-being and health uh, in a in a larger way and we often talk about uh, food security right but this is really about health security making sure that people have the right things like you say oxygen tanks where they need it or um, uh, vaccinations in africa or something else somewhere else at the time when they need it right so it's not sitting in big storage units let's say in the eu yes. and then not being used where it can be used other places so it's really about shifting around uh, what is needed and and being able to foresee uh, just as long in advance where people need the medical attention absolutely absolutely and i think another part of it is also uh, having more supply of doctors nurses building these um, you know incentivizing people to join these professions because you see i think what covid really highlighted was that you need more doctors in the world you need more nurses you need medical staff uh, more broadly um, and i think that could be another quick learning from what we went through uh, through covid and i mean everything if we don't have health right then everything else falls apart we can see how businesses have been interrupted here in the last few years and how governments have had to really take big decisions very fast because they needed to do so so the more we can foresee challenges that they will come both physically and mental then it's really a it's really a top priority
Right. Um, I think another thing that I really want to talk about, Anne Marie, is uh, you know the link you shared with me about good life goals. Yeah. And I really love hearing about the good life goals because it talks about yes, uh, the the UN SDGs are made for nations, mm. but all of us are stakeholders in achieving them. Whether we are acting as a company whether we are acting as an individual or a citizen, it's all our responsibility to contribute positively to these. So can you tell us a little bit about the good life? Well, I think it taps perfectly into the need where we, just like you say, we want to help people take action so that they feel f both for their mental health and their um, just overall uh, taking action, that this is something. So the good life goals um, are on not this country high level thing, that we keep talking about with the sustainable development goals. They have taken the sustainable development goals and made like five, six little um, actions that people can take. And it's really simple. For instance, with SDG3, they say there's five different things you should do. You should learn about and share ways to stay healthy. So that's self-education. You yeah. should wash your hands and exercise regularly. Ah, oh, okay, I can do that too, right? Yeah. Um, you should stay safe on and near roads. We hopefully do that all the time. Yeah. And then you, number four is uh, value mental uh, uh, health, health and well-being. So I think the word value is very interesting because it means that you have to put it at the same level as physical well-being. And we're not good at that in, in, in maybe especially in the industrialized countries. Yeah. We need to do our physical work, right, and go to work, whatever it costs. And even if we know that we are um, at the place where we should take some rest, we still keep going. So I think mental health, it's very interesting to, to value it high. Yeah. And then lastly, it says to demand medical care and vaccinations for all. And the word demand is again a, an interesting word, right? We should take care that the people around us and in our communities and where we are nearby have access to medical care and that they can have the vaccinations they need so that, that we create a good society. And for that reason, the, the good life goals are just really simple, as you say. Yeah, it, it literally gives a list and you can say if you're doing something about it or if it's something that you need to think more about. And I think that's very interestingly put, right, because uh, it's taking these targets and these very high level things into a way that we as day to day people can associate with. And I really I really like that. Yeah. And yes. we need simple because that's the thing about if we talk about climate crisis or some of the big challenges we have in the world, they are so big that we don't know where to start, right? But yeah. individuals, we can do our own little things. Um, for instance, buying that toothbrush I always use as a metaphor, right? Shifting it from a plastic toothbrush to a bamboo toothbrush or something else. Because it's a conscious way to say, I've done something. It might not be the biggest impact, but I'm testing out what I can do to lower my emissions and, and do something positive for my society. Yeah. And yeah. that's really important for health, uh, for mental health, right? Yes, we take absolutely. absolutely. And I think it's about also being responsible for our actions, right? Uh, a lot of us sometimes think that, oh, what, what can I as a, as a regular person do and what mm -hmm. impact would that have? But it's about driving that uh, sort of a thing. Yeah. Um, I think another thing as part of this goal that it's about research and development. Um, a lot of people talk about that. Uh, so what is happening in the research and development phase? What is the financing for research and development? Yeah. Um, so one of the insights about SDG3 is that there's a lack of data uh, in how you, for instance, hinder uh, the COVID um, or yeah. other health crisis, right? Yeah. So there needs to be a really high focus on creating financial opportunities for companies, of course, to build this infrastructure that enables data to trickle out. And I think that's the same for anything else, any other global crises with, that we have or look at with the Sustainable Development Goals. True data um, that's both like regional and local and, and global so that you can tackle what is the most interesting. And it costs money, but it's also something that can create quite a lot of wealth and it can create jobs for, for people in regions, right? 
Yeah, no, absolutely. And I think um, another interesting thing that COVID has done is a lot of people take health for granted. Mm -hmm. Or if not for granted, don't put that as a priority. And one thing COVID did was it enabled governments to understand that health infrastructure and financing health infrastructure is absolutely crucial because that shows your resilience to the uncertainty. And I think that's something that the UAE championed quite well. And we can see in many places, right, that nations uh, who need to report on the SDGs, nations have a hard time um, not sending funding to the people who already have funding. Mm -hmm. So we need to consciously and effortless, why? Like, we need to take the money to the right places, to the right organizations who do something for the people who don't already have the infrastructure. Yeah. And that's just become more apparent, even though it's something that is not new, right? Absolutely. No, you're right about that. Um, so let's, given that we've discussed a lot about SG3, I know we've talked a little bit about the practicality for it, but can we break that down a little bit more for what can companies do yeah. to uh, positively impact SDG3? Yeah. So companies should definitely, should and can, talk about both mental and physical health, right? They should make their employees stand up, for instance, uh, give them a table where they can stand up and work. I have one, I forget to use it, but uh, it can also be, for instance, creating a, a Friday workout. Now we have shorter Fridays. It could create a voluntary Friday workout where someone, uh, I think I used that example before, someone who loves yoga or someone who loves this particular thing can share it with their community. Yeah. Um, and it can definitely be for the mental health to make sure that people are not pressured uh, to overworking themselves because overworked people are not productive. Yeah. They're not productive, they are unhappy and they are at much higher risk of like even falling way below underperformance, right? Um, and that costs companies money. So it's much better to give overworked staff a break a much needed break uh and then like have them come back again yeah and i think just the focus about mental health being equally worth to physical health is really important especially here where we have many office uh, jobs right and it's very hard to detect mental health if you just sit in an office in your cubicle so talk about it make it a space that people can talk about right no, I, I think you touch on, on a very important topic of well-being and there are a lot of companies that are now talking about well-being at work. And uh, I think you're absolutely right. Work-life balance is a very, very important component of it. Um, I think different cultures had different viewpoints on work-life balance. I come from in, in, in India and work-life balance in India is non-existent. Yeah. Uh, their companies assume the longer hours you work, the more dedicated you are. Yeah. So shifting that conversation yeah. to a more balanced approach is uh, the need of the hour. And yeah. I absolutely agree with you that there's so much companies can do in that. It, it, there's so much that they can do. And also just look at your employees, right? Like go and look out in the room if you're the managing director or the owner of the company. Check out, are they are they ducking? Are they hiding? Or do they actually look to be happy in the place where they are? Um, and I think that there's many things that we can do uh, to create the community inside the companies where they are allowed to talk to each other. You don't have to be the instigator of the conversation. Just give them the place and time where they can do it. Right. And I think touching a little bit about mental health, it could also be about having genuine conversations. I know that sounds uh, very high level, but about actually asking people how they are because yeah. um, uh, a lot of times uh, we don't get to know what the other person is kind of going through and just being kinder and being more present helps and goes a long way. And we very often see companies creating service externally, right? We ask our customers, we ask our partners, how are you doing? But if you don't do the same internally, then there's also a lot of opportunities that you're missing. Um, yeah. And I think really little things about asking your employees, for instance, if their work desk is good, if they can be productive at the place where they sit. Um, I also read a study a few years ago that still rings in my head that women, for instance, uh, lose concentration uh, 
uh, with one degree higher than min. So in the room, if, for instance, the temperature falls below 23 degrees or something, then women feel it a lot more and your concentration goes rapidly. Oh, really? So if the physical room temperature is too cold, then you have a lot of women sitting who are struggling to actually like focus on the task at hand. And that's just one thing, right? But making sure that you create environments where people can have a telephone call without disturbing 50 other people. Yeah, yeah. I think environment is a very important aspect you uh, picked up. I think another thing is about what you expose your employees to, right? Uh, if you're serving them food and if that's part of it, what kind of food are you serving them? Do you have uh, junk food lying in your office? Is that the norm in the culture? Is of the there country? a fridge, for instance, yeah. which I've worked in a company where there was no fridge. So how can people's food be good at the end of the day? Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. So there's so many little things we all as companies and individuals can do to positively. And I think if we learn from these good life goals, right, that asking for what you need is also part of the employees. Um, yeah at their own best uh, practice. Exactly. You should ask for what makes you comfortable, yeah. what makes yeah. you thrive, what yeah. uh, positively impacts your well-being. Yeah. Um, no, you're absolutely right about that. Uh, is there anything else you need to add, Anne-Marie? No, I think it's good. But And then for the individuals, it's the same, right? We need to create uh, good spaces in our house, in our homes, where we feel mentally stable and good That's and cool. where we have access to what we need. Um, and I think a, a life lesson these days where resources are becoming scarce is that we don't need to buy things to be happy. Yeah. Mental health comes a lot from the inside and being able to do what you need to do with the people you want to be with. Right? Absolutely. No, that's that's really well put. <laughs> yeah, I think mental health and just kind of individually making your workspaces, your home, your lifestyle, um, you know, more healthy is something that can be yeah. to positively contribute to the goal. Yeah, yeah. Great. Excellent. Well, what do you think is your most uh, interesting part of SDG3? If you think about yourself as a private person, do you have something? Yeah. So I think for me, for SDG3, what's really interesting is the mental health aspect. And I think uh, for me, why it's that is it's not talked about enough and now it's getting a lot of attention, but it's 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 something that needs to be broken into a lot more. Uh, it's interesting to see that the acceptance is increasing, but it it still has a long way to go. Yeah. And I think uh, people need to be comfortable in showing their vulnerable side and mental health is a, it, it, it is a medical condition, right? It needs to be addressed like any other medical problem would be. And, um, and I think with COVID, I've seen a lot of people I know struggle with mental health, including myself. And it's about making that okay to talk about. So I think for me personally at an SGG three level one, of course is, you know, fitness and diet, that's definite, but also a mental health. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. We keep working on it. Yeah, absolutely. Great. Thank you so much for your time and your lovely in input, uh, Anne Marie. It's always a pleasure speaking with you. Same, Namrat. Always <laughs> a pleasure. And then we will share a lot of the links that we've uh, shown here. And then we would love to hear if you have any comments. Uh, I think that's always appreciated. Absolutely. And then. Stay tuned with the SDG series. We're going to come up with SDG 4 next. So uh, continue watching. Thank you. Thank you.